Hey guys, welcome back for another video. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to construct a traditional log cabin quilt block from start to finish. So grab your ruler, grab your rotary cutter, and let's get started. So to get started with your log cabin block, the first thing you're gonna to need to do is select your fabrics. Start by picking a fabric for the center of your block. Then you're gonna pick three light shades of fabric and three dark shades. Typically you want these fabrics to coordinate somehow, either with the print or the color. If you're having any trouble following along this tutorial, you can head over to my website and print out the document that I'm showing you here. It may make things a little bit more clear. Once you've had all your fabric selected, I kind of like to play around with the order in which I'm going to put the fabrics on my block. Start with the center, then go to the lightest light, then the next darkest light, followed by the darkest light, and repeat the process for your dark fabrics as well. Before you actually use your fabric, it's a good idea to either iron it or wash and iron it. Whether or not you wash and iron your fabric is completely up to you, but I've kind of made it a habit to always wash before I'm gonna use it for a project. So you'll wanna continue pressing all of your fabric until all the pieces that you're gonna use for your block are nice and flat. This part is really necessary when you're going to cut your fabrics into strips. If your fabric isn't laying really nice and flat, it can cause a lot of problems when trying to cut, especially if using a rotary cutter. Now, if you're gonna be using scissors and a tape measure, it may not be as difficult. But for me, I always press. All right, now that your fabric is pressed, let's go ahead and start cutting. So each one of the strips that you're going to be cutting for your log cabin block is gonna measure two and a half inches wide. This is standard. Once you know how to construct the block, you can really change it up and make the blocks as wide or as small as you want. Again, this is just a starting point. So for today's tutorial, I'm only showing you how to construct the block. I'm not gonna be going over exact fabric requirements and how many pieces of each fabric you're going to need to construct so many blocks for each size quilt. I'm really only making four blocks so I can show you just how to cut the fabric and how to put them together because that really is the most challenging part of making a quilt. So for the purpose of today's video, you're only gonna see me cutting two or three strips of each one of my fabrics to use in my quilt blocks. I just need to make sure I have enough to make the four blocks for a project that I have in mind. So if you're looking for really specifics on fabric requirements for all the different quilt sizes that you can make using these log cabin blocks, I'm gonna have a couple amazing resources linked down below that you can check out. Um, they're books that give really specific information on each one of the fabrics that you're gonna need and how much of each one for each size quilt. So now I'm gonna show you guys how I like to arrange my fabrics next to my sewing machine so it makes piecing my blocks really efficient and it keeps me from accidentally sewing on the wrong strip of fabric. So here's what I like to do. Grab whatever fabric you're using for your center block and you're gonna put that on the left. We're gonna be working from left to right just like you were reading a book. After your center fabric, you're gonna grab your first light then your first dark, then your second light, and then your second dark, your third light, and then your third dark. So it's also really important to note that each fabric that you have here is going to be used in each block two times, except the center fabric. The center fabric is only used once. All right, so we are over at the sewing machine, and as I said before, we're gonna be using a quarter inch seam allowance for piecing. You're gonna start by taking that strip of first light fabric, face it up on your sewing surface. Take the fabric that you're gonna be using for your center block, and you're gonna put that right sides together on that first light fabric. You can pin these if you want, but usually I just try to be careful when I'm laying these down that they don't shift. So this is what you should have when you are finished sewing. Your center fabric stitched to your first light. 
Now let's go ahead and head over to the cutting surface and I'll show you how to cut these. So now you should have your center fabric attached to your strip of first light. Go ahead and lay this flat on a cutting mat and grab your rotary cutter and a ruler. And you're going to measure each one of your squares two and a half inches and cut. Once you're finished cutting, go ahead and turn your iron on because the next step is going to be to press our seams. So as you can see here, it's my center fabric attached to my first light. Now we're going to head back over to the machine and attach our second strip of first light fabric. We have our pieces that we've already stitched together, cut and pressed. You're going to grab another strip of our first light fabric and open that up facing right sides up. Making sure that the first light is at the top, you're going to put that right sides facing down and you're going to do this along your strip of fabric. Then you're going to use that quarter inch seam allowance and you're going to stitch these together. After you get past this one, you can grab another set of fabrics here, face that right sides facing down, and you're just going to continue doing this until you've pieced as many blocks as you need. So now I've got those two blocks stitched to a, another piece of first light fabric. So we're going to head back over to the cutting station and we're going to get these trimmed up just like we did before, get them pressed, and we'll add our next fabric. All right, now we're just finished sewing that second strip of first light fabric onto the previous two pieces and go ahead and give it a trim. Same step as before, you're going to go ahead and press that seam wide open so it lays nice and flat. We have our first strip of dark fabric, right sides facing up. You're going to grab the blocks that you're starting to piece here, again laying it right sides together against this dark fabric, and you're going to stitch all the way down. This is how the block should look along that strip. You have the piece that you just put on and your center fabric laying against this edge here. And you'll do this until you've pieced all of your blocks onto that first strip of dark fabric. All right, so we have that first strip of dark added to our block. Go ahead and give that a trim. Just like before, when you're finished trimming up your piece, you're gonna press that seam wide open. Okay, so once you have this block pressed open, you're going to grab a second strip of the first dark fabric and we're going to attach that to our block. Alright, we have another strip of our first dark fabric here. Right sides up on our sewing table. Again, you're going to take your block with the piece that you just added at the top. Right sides facing down on that strip and sew. So as I'm sure you'll notice with the construction of these blocks, there really is a pattern that starts to develop here. So putting the blocks together once you kind of have a system down and your space really organized can go really, really quickly. So if you're feeling a little bit discouraged and this seems like a lot is going on, just take your time. Remember, this is supposed to be fun. So here we have attached our second strip of dark fabric. This is our first dark, and this is what you should have. Now we're going to grab our second light fabric and we're going to add that to the block next. So now we'll go ahead and attach these blocks to our strip of our second light fabric. So just keep in mind too when you're sewing these blocks together that you don't have to make log cabin blocks just to make a quilt. There are so many wonderful projects that you can do with leftover quilt blocks or blocks that you're making. You can make handbags and aprons and scarves and just a lot of different things. So if you're a little intimidated by the thought of making an entire quilt, don't be. Start by making one or two blocks. See how the process goes. See if you can kind of streamline your system for constructing the blocks and just let your imagination go. You really can do some great things with these. 
If you're interested in learning how to make a twisted or a wonky log cabin, I am more than happy to show you guys how to do that as well. It is kind of just a little bit of a twist on a traditional log cabin like this one I'm showing you here. So let me know if you guys are interested in learning how to do the wonky or twisted log cabin block. I am more than happy to film a tutorial for that as well. I would definitely say that the twisted log cabin block has more of a modern feel to it than this traditional log cabin block. Um, the pieces of fabric look uneven, they're kind of staggered, and it's really fun to be able to play with different fabric patterns and different fabric textures when you're doing a wonky log cabin. So for me personally, when I'm putting these traditional log cabin blocks together, I really do like to keep it how it is intended, which is the three light fabrics and the three dark fabrics. Again, quilting is supposed to be fun and you're supposed to play with the fabrics. So really just put together what you like. Um, I have made a couple different um, log cabin quilts where I didn't stick to that three lights and three darks and they both turned out beautifully. So just have fun with it while you're quilting. If it's not fun, you're not gonna wanna do it. So it's time once again to trim up that fabric for the piece that we just added. And I believe we are now on our second dark fabric. So first strip of our second dark. Again, go ahead and give that a press. You want all your seams to be laying nice and flat. Now we're gonna add a second strip of our second dark. Again, same process. Fabrics go right side together and we're gonna use that quarter inch seam and stitch all the way down. So are you guys starting to notice the redundant pattern for the log cabin block? Pretty much stitch, then you're gonna trim, press, and repeat. So it's like this throughout the entire block. Really the biggest um, hurdle I would say that you come across when putting your blocks together is accidentally mixing up your fabric. So sewing on the strip of fabric that's not supposed to be coming next in the order, and then you'll have to use a seam ripper and rip it out. Again, it's not really a big deal. I've done this before myself when I've done my quilting marathons and I've stayed up entirely too late trying to get a quilt top done and ended up mixing up my fabrics and I didn't actually even notice it until I went to go piece my blocks together. So there's a fun little story for you. So that's, I would say the biggest hurdle when making quilt blocks is just making sure that you're um, checking carefully to make sure that the fabric that you're adding next is actually the one that's supposed to be added next. So here I am just trimming up that strip of our third light fabric, pressing it open. Then I'll grab that second strip of my third light and we'll get that added to the block. That's right guys, time again for the trim and press. You are now on the home stretch of this quilt block, so if you have made it this far in this video, congratulations. You'll be well on your way to getting a quilt put together in no time. So if you guys are interested in any of the tools that you see me using in this tutorial, this lip edge ruler, or my rotary cutter or this twistable um, cutting mat, check the description box below because I will have everything that I used listed down there. Now it's time to add your first strip of your third dark fabric. So one of the things I forgot to mention when I started this video was that it is really, really helpful to have a quarter inch piecing foot for your sewing machine just to keep your blocks really, really accurate. Now, if your machine didn't come with a quarter inch piecing foot, that is okay. Um, a lot of the times, depending on where you bought your sewing machine, you can go online to Amazon or sewing machine parts online 
and you can type in the make and model of your sewing machine and put in specifically that you're looking for a quarter inch piecing foot and you'll be able to see the options that are available to you. And if you're not able to find a piecing foot for your particular model of machine, um, you can also invest in these really awesome things called a magnetic seam gauge. And that's what I'm actually using on my sewing machine for this video today. Um, I do have a piecing foot for my machine, but I was honestly just too lazy to put it on. So I pulled out my magnetic seam gauge, which is about $4 to purchase. Again, I will have that link down below as well. And those you can pretty much use on every sewing machine. The thing I will warn you about is that if you have a computerized sewing machine, you really need to be careful about using a magnet on it. I have heard that it can change the timing on your machine and that's something you definitely don't want to happen. Then you'll have to take it into a sewing machine repair person to have that fixed. So if you're using just a standard machine like mine here is not computerized, a magnetic seam guide is really, really an inexpensive option and it works great. All right, you guys, it's the final trim and press. So go ahead and get that last strip trimmed up and give your block a final press. So if you're in the need of some resources for um, making a basic log cabin quilt from start to finish from sizes from a baby quilt or a lap quilt all the way up to a king size quilt. I will list some of my favorite resources down below. I have a couple books that I love referring to. Um, one of them is by Eleanor Burns. She's one of my favorite quilters. She's really easy to understand and she makes quilting fun. So if you're looking for resources like that, check the description box below and I will have everything you need listed down there. So that's it for our video today. I hope you guys enjoyed learning how to construct this log cabin quilt block from start to finish. If you're new to my channel, I would love it if you would stick around and hit that subscribe button. And again, if you're interested in learning how to make a different version of a log cabin quilt block, leave a comment down below. Bye guys.